Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Laura Ariaga Andreessen, the founder and chairman of Stanford PACS Center on Philanthropy and Civil Society. Good afternoon. I am humbled and honored to be here on this momentous occasion. I would like to preface my remarks by publicly stating that unlike Larry Kramer, who hates the logic model, I love the logic model, and I find it particularly useful in successfully microwaving my beloved's dinner every night. <laughs> I first want to acknowledge the awe-inspiring leadership in not just the philanthropy through peace sector, but also globally of Dr. Judy Roden. It is a privilege to be here with you. Life brings us these inexplicable dichotomies, joy and tragedy, birth, and death, blessing, and affliction. And it's oftentimes the things that bring us the greatest happiness that ultimately bring us the greatest pain. These dichotomies have the power to overtake us, to render us hapless, helpless, hopeless. But we also have the power to overtake them. We have the power to transform them into something breathtakingly beautiful. And that power takes unbridled commitment, ferocious spirit, and irrepressible will. Like many of you here, I have personally experienced what it is to live in the darkness and transform that darkness into light. I want you to meet the inspiration for that light. This is my angel mother, Frances Ariaga. She was my best friend and soulmate. She lived her life with this grace and generosity. She served on countless nonprofit boards. She was an a social entrepreneur, she was a fearless advocate for those who had no voice of their own. At 23 years old, I learned that my mother had cancer. That very day, I quit my job, I deferred my acceptance to Stanford Business School, and I began a 20-month journey during which I had the privilege of being my mother's primary caregiver. And it was during that journey that I lived for the first time and experienced the incomparable beauty of complete selflessness. And I knew from that moment on, I could live no other way. And that the very purpose of my existence was to live in service to others. I knew why I wanted to give, and I knew what I wanted to give, but I was completely bewildered as to how I could not merely give, but give in a way that had amazing impact. And that challenge rapidly led me to my life's purpose, empowering and educating individuals to give in a way that matters more. I have bet my entire career on changing how it is people give. Every gift has three primary factors. Why we give, what we give, and how we give. Why we give the motivations that inspire our generosity surround us every day. Globally, 2.5 billion people do not have access to basic sanitation. Nationally, a student permanently drops out of school every 26 seconds. 
And here in our nation's capital, 30% of children live in poverty. We are also surrounded by the generosity that translates into what we give. Last year, individuals made up almost 80% of the $316 billion given in the United States. Over 64 million Americans volunteered their time, totaling in excess of 7.8 billion hours. But to make the most of why and what we give, we must focus on how we give. It's estimated that two-thirds of all individual giving is based purely on emotion. It has no research behind it. I see this as massively untapped potential. Yes, our giving celebrates our society's spectacular pluralism. But simultaneously, our giving operates with spectacular inefficiency. Currently, there are almost no market forcing functions that drive inefficient nonprofits out of business. We as philanthropists are the consumers who are keeping these organizations alive because we as individuals are not doing the research that rewards the nonprofits that have the highest social return on investment as opposed to the nonprofits that are showing us the most provocative images or telling us the most moving stories. The onus is on us as individuals to be accountable for what specific impact our generosity creates. We have to commit to researching every single one of our investments, not only before we make them, but along the way and after we make them as well. It is our commitment to learning that is ultimately what will compel our partners in social change, nonprofits to evaluate their work hopefully with our individual support to do so and create measurable social impact. How we have been giving is a massive social problem. But I believe that how we could be giving is a massive social solution. I believe that educating and empowering individuals to innovate in their giving through a market-based approach can alter our global landscape. When I think of innovation, I think of four things. The creation of something new, the renewal of something that already exists, new thinking around existing processes, systems, problems, and new behavior, inspiring others to evolve how it is they react and they act. Anyone can innovate in their giving by taking five simple steps of a market-based approach. Number one, we have to focus on the people we aspire to serve and how it is we can connect with them. Number two, we have to engage the people we want to serve in finding out directly from them what it is they want and they need. Number three, we have to design the products and the services that we create around their particular context while also taking into consideration external influences and trends. 
Number four, we have to dedicate ongoing resources to R&D. We have to incessantly evaluate our work and learn from it and share that learning with others. And number five, we need to commit to ongoing adaptation, evolution, and innovation. I'm gonna quickly illustrate each of these five steps through philanthropic innovations that I have created to help people give in a way that matters more. And each one of these innovations is based in two core things. Number one, consumer empathy, and number two, knowledge sharing. For every single day, I walk in the shoes of the individuals that I aspire to serve in my work. And I constantly seek their feedback to fuel my own continuous evolution in my organizations and products. One, empathy. In 1998, I founded SV2, the Silicon Valley Social Venture Fund, to create an experiential grant-making education for the new generation of high-tech wealth to invest their time, expertise, and dollars into a portfolio of early-stage nonprofits. Now, the power in this particular model is that of amplification. For our SB2 donors or investors, take what they learn within SB2, and they channel that into their giving outside of SB2, which literally represents billions of dollars. Number two, engagement. In 2000, I had the honor of joining the faculty at Stanford Graduate School of Business. I was thrilled about this opportunity because the single greatest challenge that I faced in my own career was that I had had no formal education to prepare me for a career as a philanthropist and as a social entrepreneur. And so I interviewed hundreds of past and present students to find out what it is they specifically needed to create greater change in our ever-changing world. And I've done so through an evolving portfolio of courses that are adapted every year given external influences. Number three, product design. I am a pracademic. I am part philanthropic practitioner, and I am part academic. And in having this dual career, in 2005, I identified this massive chasm between these two traditionally very siloed sectors and no bridge to formally connect them and share the extraordinary resources across them. And that market need compelled me to found the Stanford Center on Philanthropy and Civil Society, or as we know it, Stanford PACS. Number four, R&D. In 2009, I amassed over 1,000 questions that individual givers have asked me over the course of their careers as to how they can give with greater impact. I took all of my own research and experience and expertise and translated it into a readily accessible roadmap for anyone giving anything in any amount. My book, Giving 2.0. And finally, adaptation, evolution, and innovation. Today, I am elated to announce publicly for the very first time the creation of the Laura Ariaga Andreessen Foundation, or as I like to call it, LAF. LAF is a private operating foundation, but we operate as a philanthropic innovation lab. And we will use technology 
to globally scale open source educational innovations to positively influence how it is people give. We are living in a moment of limitless possibility. New generations have social consciousness literally built into their DNA. Technology is disrupting and democratizing philanthropy every minute of every day. And giving is at one of its strongest places in history. So I want you to think of a few what ifs. What if all individual givers thought that how they gave was their single greatest opportunity? What if all of our future generosity had 10 times or even 100 times the impact of our current generosity because individual givers were innovating based on a market-based approach? And what if at the Rockefeller Foundation's 200th year anniversary, individual giving was universally based on research because knowledge was universally shared. We have one thing in our lives that is ineradicable, that cannot be destroyed. And that is the good that we create for others and for our society. So let's each one of us ensure that the good that we create is great. Thank you.